Have you ever felt your heart race, skip beats, maybe it wakes you up in the middle of the night pounding in your chest? It's very scary. So the first thing you do is you get checked out with a cardiologist, you go see your primary care, your heart gets fully checked out and you're told it's fine. Okay, that's good news. But then you say, but what's wrong? Because it keeps doing it, right? I keep having my heart pounding in my chest, skip beats, etc. We're gonna look at the influence of your stomach on your heart. This is a very real connection. Maybe you've heard of the gut-brain axis. Well, there is a gut-heart axis that is very well researched. All the research that supports this will be in the description of this video, just FYI. A couple of foundational things to know, and that is that your stomach lies just below your diaphragm, uh, just a little left of center, and then right above the stomach and the diaphragm is your heart. So the proximity of these three structures, these three organs, they are very close to one another. As a matter of fact, following the line of your esophagus from your mouth connecting down to your stomach is something called your vagus nerve, which is your longest cranial nerve. Your gut triggers heart symptoms when you're suffering with gas, bloating, reflux, or slowed stomach emptying. Now you know there's slowed emptying when you feel like what's in your stomach is just sitting there. Sometimes people describe it as, I feel like I swallowed a brick and nothing's moving. That is slowed emptying of your stomach. You know that this situation is triggering your heart when after eating a big meal or feeling very bloated, that's what's triggering your heart palpitations. Or you bend over to maybe tie your shoe or pick something up off the floor and that triggers them. Perhaps you lie down on a full stomach and that triggers them. All of these things are a clue that the stomach is related to the heart. And I hear from people all the time who have been to the cardiologist because of course that's your first stop and they're told your heart is fine. Okay, that's the good news. And they start to figure it out. They start to see the connection uh, of I'm full, I'm really bloated, I bent over and, and that's what triggered it. So they're seeing it, maybe you have as well. Your vagus nerve is a key link here because when it gets irritated, it can create the havoc of what your heart is doing. Normally what the vagus nerve does is it keeps the, nice, the heart at a nice steady beat. It, the vagus nerve dominates a part of your nervous system called the parasympathetic nervous system. You've heard of fight or flight, that's your sympathetic nervous system. Well, the, the other side of the coin is your parasympathetic nervous system, which has to do with rest, digest, and relax. And the vagus nerve is responsible for most of those activities. That's why when your gut is irritated, it can irritate the vagus and then the heart gets irritated and it starts flip-flopping and tachycardia, which is a fast heart rate, or the pounding. All of these symptoms uh, can be connected to vagus nerve irritation. Once again, this is your heart has been checked out as fine. You don't have heart disease, but you are very much having heart symptoms. So this is the link that can be causing it. And there's good news. There's good news in how to fix this. When the stomach is distended from that slowed motility I spoke about, or there's a lot of gas and bloat, or you have a hiatal hernia, it pushes up. When it gets distended, it pushes up onto the diaphragm and not only irritates the vagus nerve, but the diaphragm can go into spasm and the diaphragm also elevates. So the stomach pushes up, the diaphragm pushes up, and then the heart can get mechanically irritated because they're so close together. So you have a mechanical irritation due to uh, incorrect motion, movement of these organs, and then you have the neurological, the vagus nerve irritation. There's a few mechanisms at play here. There's also an inflammatory component where because you have acid reflux, the esophagus is irritated and that inflammation irritation is creating irritation to the heart and then causing the heart palpitations, the tachycardia, the flip-flopping, etc. There's also some lifestyle components to look at and that is overeating, eating heavy meals, you know, very fatty, rich food, uh, excess alcohol, excess caffeine, um, going to bed on a full stomach, so you wanna wait a good three to four hours before you go to bed, especially after a large meal. So there are lifestyle factors to take into consideration as well. So what should you do? 
Step number one, always see the cardiologist, see your primary care physician, make sure your heart is fine. Once that has been done, now we need to delve into the gut and you want to get an assessment. Do you have hiatal hernia? Do you have acid reflux? Usually you know if you have acid reflux based on symptomatology. You can find out if you have a hiatal hernia. Also things you know if you have bloat, if you have gas, if you have constipation. Also taking PPI medication. One of the side effects of PPI medication is imbalancing what's called your microbiome, your 60 to 100 uh, healthy bacteria in your colon. And when they are disrupted, it can create the slower, slowed motility in your stomach and the rest of your GI tract, give you more bad bacteria than good bacteria. So it's a component in this scenario as well. The next thing you can do is what's called functional lab tests. So you can assess the health or imbalance of the microbiome. You can find out whether you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth called SIBO. See if you have any food sensitivities. Perhaps you have a toxin load that's too high from mold or heavy metal. Maybe you have fatty liver or your gallbladder is not working as well as it should. All of these parts of your digestive tract should be assessed to see what's contributing. So what are some strategies? Smaller meals, watch for not having excess carbonation, especially when you're eating a meal. Uh, watch for alcohol and caffeine excess, N not terribly fatty meals or very, very rich meals. Anything that you've noticed contributes to your acid reflux and your bloat should of course be avoided. But with that said, I will tell you, having done this for a long period of time, when you have dysbiosis, when you have imbalanced bacteria in your colon, or you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which tends to come about due to the imbalanced bacteria lower in the colon, when you have that, um, you can get to a point where it feels like everything you eat is causing gas and bloat. And it's because of the imbalanced bacteria, the bad guys, as I like to call them. And it's not that every single food you're eating is truly the root cause of the problem. If you're getting into this situation where you feel like the number of foods you're eating is just getting whittled down smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, that's when you really need to reach out for help because uh, we, we often meet patients that are down to eating about five foods. And, and that's not it. That's not the root cause. That's the effect of it, not the cause of it. So you're going to need some help, need to get some functional testing to regain the balance of the good bacteria. And then all of a sudden, beautifully, your diet starts to broaden out again and you can enjoy food again. So continuing on with the strategies, if you do the functional testing, which you may very well need to do, then of course, treating what you find. Find. Uh, learning about diaphragmatic breathing, strengthening the diaphragm does a lot to reduce reflux and take the pressure off the heart. HRV training, heart rate variability training is really good for the vagus nerve. So there's cold exposure, uh, the physiological sigh is a breathing technique. There's certain forms of exercise that help with HRV. Uh, prioritizing sleep also helps with heart rate variability, helps with the vagus, helps with stress levels. Speaking of stress, learning what's causing stress in your life and any factors that you do have control over, not all of them are in our control, but those that you can control, trying to strategize uh, what you can do to lessen that burden. That helps the vagus nerve as well. We can't forget hydration. So many Americans are dehydrated. They're just not getting enough fluid. And last but certainly not least, the quality of your diet. A Mediterranean diet is a really healthy way to go. It's real food. Uh, you know, you think of olive oil with Mediterranean diet, but you also think of enough lean, clean protein, nuts and seeds, berries, vegetables. It's a beautiful diet. There's a lot of variety in it, um, but very important that you really focus on real food, not the fast food, not the ultra processed food, uh, not the sugar, and uh, really lessen your alcohol. That was a lot, I know, but I hear from so many of you suffering with this problem and I really wanted to address it in a comprehensive format. So I hope you find this helpful and informative. If you do, 
please share it with somebody in your life who might be suffering from acid reflux and the scary effect of having heart palpitations when they don't have heart disease. And if you like the channel, uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, send me a comment. I love your comments. I answer pretty much every one and we'll talk soon.